Over 450 Islamic bankers and regulators are in town for the third annual World Islamic Banking Conference. The conference focused on how Islamic banks can boost liquidity through cross-border transactions. Cross-border investment flows are also constrained by differing interpretations of permissible transactions under Sharia principles. The isolated pools of Islamic liquidity in each market restrict opportunities for more efficient allocation of capital across consumers, industries and jurisdictions. As of last year, the Islamic finance industry is estimated to have reached 1.3 trillion US dollars in total assets. That's an annual growth rate of 20% over the last five years. But it accounts for less than 1% of the global financial system. Because if you look at you know, around the Muslim world itself, it is only about one in eight of bankable Muslims who currently bank Islamic. Yeah, so seven out of eight still bank conventional. And I think the real challenge is when we are able to read that stage, when we can convert the balance seven, the liquid pool then becomes far, far greater in the hands of the Islamic banks. Bankers say the lack of regulatory and product standards make it hard for the industry to achieve economies of scale. But that's changing thanks to regulatory changes. Last year alone, uh, 2011, uh, we saw a spike in, uh, in the Islamic fundraising uh, between Malay, uh, between Indonesia particularly, uh, between 400 to 400, 500 million US. Uh, out of uh, four, four or five transactions, uh, up to within a year. Following the Lehman crisis in 2008 and MF Global's bankruptcy last year, many ordinary investors have been burnt by complex structured finance products. Industry leaders at the conference agree that Islamic finance, with its focus on transparency, price certainty and risk sharing, can offer a viable alternative to both Muslims and non-Muslims.